What is up guys, Halloween Hunters here, and today we are going to be doing LED tea molding on my favorite arcade game, Carnival. Um, this came from a company called teamolding.com. As far as I can tell, they're the only company that sells this stuff. Here it is. Now, I have it, had it sitting for a week like this, reversed. It is uh, recommended. So this stuff is pretty thick, clear, and hollowed out for LED strips. Now, you have to use LED strips that are non-waterproof, which these are. The LEDs we are using are going to be these Govi smart lights. These hook up to the Govi app on your phone, and you can do any color and any sequence you want. I might have to use two rolls of these, and we're going to have to do some little custom wiring on this thing to make it fit both sides. Um, might, I think I want to do this too, but I'm not sure how I'm going to wire that yet. But let's start doing it. We're going to have to rip this T-molding off. We'll, we'll measure out uh, how much we need for each side, and then we'll start seeing how much LEDs we need. So as you see, I started running the LEDs through. You're just going to keep shoving them in there. I cut it to length first. You're going to want to cut it to the length you need. And we're going to run it through and we're going give to it, give it a little test. I wish it was a little more foggy. It's like a little too clear. So I think you're going to see kind of like dots. Which I'm not a big fan of, but this is about the best you can get. All right, guys. So I'm having to use the string trick to get through. So I just tied it to the string. I had to run the string through first. I put a paper clip. And I used a strong mechanic magnet to help me get it through. And now I'm going to pull the magnet end. And this end is tied. It'll pull it through now. Alrighty, so I'm starting to put it on. And I just wanted to show you guys some tricks. So first off, what I did was I ran the LED all the way up to the wire right there. Now we're going to do some custom wiring with that later. So don't worry about that right now. I then cut the LED strip at the bottom. I folded it and shoved it inside. Actually, it needs to go down a little bit more, so I'll have to try to grab it. Some of it got up a little bit. That sucks, but hopefully I can grab that and shove it down. You're gonna wanna use a mallet to tap it. Now to get these curves, I wanna show you my little trick. So if you are wrapping this way, you're curving like this, you wanna cut relief cuts. This will help it bend better. When you're making curves this way towards the bottom of the T part, you want to cut that piece out. So from about right here to right here, you're going to just cut this whole piece out. And I'll show you before I put it in. That'll give you a nice, very close curve. And you don't need anything stuck in there because it's going to be stuck all the way through there, up to there, and then the rest. So as you see, right when I get to my corner here, I cut out a chunk of it out of this piece here. Doesn't have to be perfect or pretty or nothing, but that'll give you a nice good curve. I'm gonna do it again on this curve and we're good to go to the back. Now let's flip this over. Like that. And then that'll give you a nice curve. Now, I'm not flush there. I'm going to use my mallet. You want to very lightly tap it. Now, normally, you can tap it a little harder <clears throat> with standard T-molding. But you remember, you have LEDs in here, and you don't want to break them. One of the biggest complaints I saw online about these is people trying to get them in flush <clears throat> and blowing out their LEDs, and then you're going to have a dim spots or blow out a whole section. So be very careful with the LEDs. You just want to lightly tap them to get it in. Okay. Tonight I'm only doing this one side. I'm just going to actually go to just right here and then test it because my parents are sleeping and their room is right there. So I don't want to be hammering them to wake them up, but we'll finish this tomorrow. But we're going to finish this part and then I'll do a test. Alrighty. So here's a little test. Looks pretty sick. I... I think this looks perfect for a game like Carnival. You know, it gives it more of like that Carnival feel. 
Uh, these are full color changing as well. So um, they also can be fully controlled. They're also sound. So if you're out here just It'll pick up the gun triggers. So that's cool. Um, and there's so many cool sequences you can do online. Let me turn the lights off. Um, I'm not gonna turn the game on because even though it's set to the quietest, it's still really loud. So this one side, almost done. That back part's the easiest. Um, I'm probably gonna splice it somewhere around here. That way this, I'm gonna mount next to, uh, somewhere on the back next to the other light. I mean, a switch. The red looks really good. This is like, this is the reason I did this. So basically I saw somebody else do this and a lot of the um, Raw Thrills games are actually coming with these stock now. A lot of the newer Raw Thrills games have these already out of the box. But I saw somebody do a custom arcade cabinet. Um, they did Tron. This is also perfect for Tron. And they did Tron with the blue. And I was like, fuck, that is so perfect for Carnival. Uh, we'll turn on Carnival next part of this video when we do the other side. And I'm also still debating if I want to do this piece here. Um, there's, there is tea molding right here and I planned on doing it. I bought enough to do it. And I think it would look really cool lighting the bottom of the game. Only problem with that is that if I'm running sequences through my phone, cause you can do where the lights run this way and that way or blink certain ways so if we have running lights going this way, this is gonna do the same thing, but it'll be running one direction. Um, unless we run it off its own source, which I don't wanna do, I wanna run everything off one. So, I don't know, we might just throw standard lights. I, I don't know, I gotta figure something out. But so far I'm loving this, this looks so sick. And I can't wait to turn the game on. For me it's tomorrow, but for you guys it's in a couple seconds. So, next. Oh, and by the way, this clear T-molding is $4 a foot. So for me to do this full cabinet from back corner down on both sides and enough for that was almost $100. That's without the lights. So the Govi lights, smart lights are $25. I think they went up a little bit, so they're almost 30. So for this mod, you're at about $130. And uh, you're gonna have to do some custom wiring to get them all to run on one harness. What you could do also is pay a little more and you get the super long strip of Govi lights and you run it like this. <clears throat> so you'll start like this, how I did this one. But instead of cutting it at the bottom, you could just run it across underneath and then back up this side. If you bought the really long strip, I didn't wanna do that because I didn't want the underneath to be glowing. Um, so I do have a couple boxes, so I can just run another RGB there and splice the wires and mount them together. It'll work great. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. So let's move on to the next step, the next day for, uh, for me and a couple seconds for you guys. All right guys, before I pack up for the night and we finish tomorrow, which I have a huge video coming out um, probably tomorrow night. This video is actually gonna be later, so sorry yesterday there's gonna be a badass video if that makes sense but here's a little test with the govi um smart lights this is me controlling it through my phone uh this is one of the many many settings there's tons of settings you can pick any color you want there's all kinds of sequences this one is called game three um but there's literally like probably over 100 different options of light sequences you can use and it looks so much better in person than it does on the camera. The camera is not really doing any justice right now. 
So I think I'm just gonna do the LEDs on the both sides and then the middle I'm gonna leave empty for now. In the future, I do think I'm gonna do a single light bar here, probably in red. And then I'm gonna get LED buttons for these. And I might do the LED speakers too. <clears throat> and I'm also, I'm gonna have to switch this marquee to LED because right now it's still on the, the bulb. So it's not very bright. So I wanna brighten that up with a nice bright LED bar in there. Um, my side art's good. It's definitely not worth changing. It's got a couple things, but it's not worth taking off this original art, you know? I have the original everything. This game is 100% original. Although I think I might take out the hard drive to do go to a flash drive because they run... From what everyone has told me, they run faster, they run smoother, they run better. So I might do that. Um, another thing I might do is take out the coin door. Uh, not the upper one where the coins go in, but actually the coin collection, I guess. I'm thinking about taking this door out building a nice little frame and a piece of plexiglass with some LEDs because I already test fitted it and it fits. I have a almost complete signed cotton candy guns from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I have the Chiodo brothers. All the main actors and actresses are on here. Debbie, John Manziri, the man who composed all the music, the legendary Chiodo Brothers on the front. On the back, I have three of the clowns and the main actor, Mike. Um, so I was thinking about displaying this inside. I was thinking about taking the gun out, building a custom stand out of clear plexi and having it displayed inside the cabinet. I know it's not exactly the same because, you know, this game and the the movie have nothing to do with each other, but, you know, Killer Clowns, Carnival, Carnival, they kind of go together. And I don't have anywhere to display this. I thought that would be a pretty sick place to display one. I used to own a Big Buck Hunter Pro, and the guy I sold it to actually did that. He was a big hunter and gun collector. So what he did was, is he wanted it for his man cave and trophy room. So he, I restored a big buck hunter, sold it to him, and he took out both coin doors actually. Um, and he did a custom plexi piece and he put one of his really nice uh, revolvers in there with some LEDs. So that's where I kind of got the idea it was from him, but using this cotton candy gun in there. So, not sure if I'm going to do that or not yet, but it's an idea. Alright guys, so here on the back, what I did was I'm using two controllers. That way I can control both sides separately. Now, at first I was going to wire them both up to the one controller so they could sync. Which you can also do, it'll look really cool to have them both going the same time. But last night when I was wiring it up, I decided to do two controllers. Just for the main purpose that... um. I wanted to be able to control both separately so that way I can run two different colors. And I decided that because player one is the green side with the green gun. This is the purple side. So I wanted to be able to have, you know, run green and purple and mix it up. So I have it set up as Carnival player one and Carnival player two on the app. So let's turn them on. Alrighty, so now I have them both hooked up. And it looks so beautiful. Look at this. This is on one of the many settings that you can choose from on the app. This one I think is under lifestyle and then you go to games. And this is game number three, I'm pretty sure. So it looks freaking sick. Uh, let's turn it on here. Get the full effect. But this is just like the perfect game to run these these carnival style lights on so you can go through the app and change everything it's a little hard for me because i film on my phone and the app's on the phone so i can't change it right now but then i can pause the video and change it and record again but here she is push it back a little bit but um oh fuck the wheels on this thing suck 
I uh, I put wheels that were a little too big, so the brake hits the <laughs> hits the edge and doesn't want to go straight. But there she is. I do want to do LED in there, like I've said before. I think I'm gonna change these to LED as well. Do a green and purple LED buttons. Um, I'm gonna do an underglow here, but I'm loving it so far. Honestly, the camera doesn't do it justice, but looks pretty sick. Um, not too hard to do, a little costly. So, um, like I said, these Govi lights, about 30 bucks a box, uh, depending how you want to run them. So I decided to run two. So it's $60 for lights, and it was $90 plus, 90-something for the actual strips. I did buy about an extra four feet, so... Or so for that piece there because I my original intention was to put another clear piece on the hair I think I'm not gonna do that because it'll it won't look right I don't think well, it's super sick still want to do a few little mods to it but I love this game it's all original and what's cool about doing things simple like T molding is you know a diehard collector isn't gonna get mad because a game doesn't have the original T-molding because, you know, something that you do want original is like side art and marquees and, you know, the cardboard bezels in the back, the original guns, that's stuff that you want original, but T-molding, people pull that and replace it and change it all the time. So worst case, you know, if I ever did sell this, which I don't plan on ever selling it, I could, um, I could easily just put the original red back on so, yeah, super glad I saw this. Um, I saw somebody else do it on the Tron, like I said, and I said, I'm doing that. Did some research on trying to find the strips. Um, when you buy this, it doesn't come with the LEDs, like I said, so you're going to have to buy your LEDs separate. So about $160 for me to do this. Um, totally worth it. Especially because this is a, a game that I don't plan on selling. If it's a game that you might sell one day, then maybe not, but this is mine. I hunted for this game for years to find one at a good price and to find one that was all original. There's so many of these that are not original um, where basically the most important part to me was having the original guns in good shape. And a lot of these games don't have the original guns. I don't think they reproduced green and purple sub nose shotguns ever this was like the only game i think that used them they have the same size and shape shotgun from midway but it's orange it was like for certain buck hunter games and stuff but um that's gonna be it guys let me change the colors real quick for you so you can kind of see so yeah you can do cool stuff like this like player one and player two lights so i got my green side and my purple side so that's the reason I chose to use two controllers. But you can, my original intention was to just use one. That way they would both sync up. But then you wouldn't be able to do this. So I like the, the option of having both sides differently. I don't know why. It's something I really like to do on a lot of arcade games that are two player is I like to kind of have two separate side T moldings. Like when I did my Area 51 cabinet I did the player one was all green stuff and the player two was all blue so I had the blue button the blue gun the blue tea molding and on this side I had the green tea molding with the green buttons the green gun I don't know I like kind of splitting the cabinet in half a little bit but this one it's just super sick because you know it's a carnival game what do you think of carnival you got all these flashing crazy lights all over the place and trying to attract guests to come into the carnival, which is exactly what this cabinet is doing. So let's change it back to the, to the other setting. This is setting game, this is lifestyle game four or game D. It's kind of crazy looking. But there's just so many settings that you can set up on these lights. It's, it's, it's so sick. You can also change the sections individually. So if you want it to go 
red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, green, purple, yellow. <laughs> like you could change it however you want, which is great. So, you know, you and your friend are playing and they want a certain lights on their side and you want to pick yours, you can go ahead. So, like I said, I set it up as on the on my phone, on the app, this is Carnival Player 1 and Carnival Player 2. That way I don't mix them up. And then you just go on the app and you click which strip you want to change and you go through and you pick whatever you want. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you guys on how to install these and some of the options you can do. Um, you don't really need to know much about wiring. Um, it is a little hard to pull the LEDs LEDs through but what I did was a couple paper clips on a string have it just fall through you can use a magnet to kind of help guide it tie the LEDs to the string and you just pull them through so thank you guys so much for watching I'll let y'all go have a great rest of your day and keep on fixing these awesome cabinets